Good morning and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mamani. I hope you all are in good mind, your friends. Uh, today is 9th March 2020. Today is Monday. I'm sure you all have enjoyed your weekend. On our table, we have an interesting editorial called House Matters. This one is about our parliament. Uh, it's also about the behavior of our MPs. Why do they behave in such a bad way and what are the reasons behind it? We are going to analyze this one in detail but before that i would like to inform all of you that at present big holy sale is going on on all our pen drive and tablet courses to find out more about it do check out studyiq.com if you have any question queries doubts regarding it you can give us a call on the numbers that you can see on your screen to download the pdf of today's lecture you have two sources on your screen one is my fb page and the second is my telegram channel Please make sure that you share this lecture with other students. Hit the like button if you have learned something from this discussion. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So, disruption in Parliament. How it all started. It started with this heavy demand by opposition leaders. They were uh, heavily asking for a thorough discussion on this Delhi's communal violence and riots. The government said that it is not ready to have a chat on this thing at present. Uh, the government said that we can, we will have a thorough discussion or we will have a proper debate on this thing only after things are settled on the ground. And uh, opposition was not happy with this thing. And what basically happened is that Congress members resorted to disruptive tactics, which led to the suspension of seven of them for the rest of the session. Now, this is not the first time that we have observed or witnessed this sort of unruly behavior. Uh, it has happened in the past as well, and we find it uh, it's quite common in our country, and it's becoming more and more common. And nowadays, this disruptive tactic is something that uh, um, means no political party is clean, right, uh, when it comes to disruptive uh, tactics. When BJP was in opposition, it used to do the same thing. At present, Congress and other parties are in opposition and they are doing the same thing. So, basically, uh, we can say that political parties are wasting precious time of our country by doing this sort of activities. Now, it's a matter of shame as well for the nation because uh, this MP is right. They know it very well. They are not kids, first thing. Second thing is, uh, they are... Um, uh, they are politicians. When I say politicians, I mean to say that they know in and out about uh, our parliament. They know about, they are well aware about the rules and regulations. But then as well, if they are doing this thing, then uh, first thing we can say is that on, on a surface level, we can say that they cannot control their emotion. And that is not a good sign of leadership, first thing. Now, many of them, are using it uh, as a sort of uh, you know their uh, it, it's basically how they how they roll if i can use a if i can use this word roll or we can say that how, this is how they um, they are you know and uh, this is why they got vote as well now you'd be thinking what i'm saying here the thing is this mps right uh, those who misbehave they have this image, right? They got people's vote because of this image. Some of them, like a person who is a thorough gentleman, uh, that person he will get a, you know, a, a, that means he he or she carries an, an image uh, as a leader. So people have voted that person because he has behaved in a very decent manner. No matter what situation, a person who is composed, who is, you know, who is, who is polite, uh, listens to you carefully. We have this sort of MPs as well. On the other side, we have some Bahubalis as well. A few days ago, we were talking about this criminalization of politics. And we know that 40% plus MPs at present, they have uh, some sort of cases, criminal cases going on against them. So in many regions in many constituencies you have this bahubalis and they have this image they have done these things earlier on as well they are quite famous for all these things like taking out guns uh, at toll plaza beating people you know using that sort of language and threatening people so there is a sort of charm as well 
Uh, and this is very sad that people are, uh, you know, people fancy. In, I'm not saying all of us, right? In few constituencies, you find that people fancy this sort of Bahubalis. And when this Bahubalis, they get uh, people's vote and when they get elected and when they find a seat uh, in, mem- in in this parliament, when they become MP, uh, they get this, uh, you can say, this stamp as well uh, from the people that uh, this sort of behavior is okay and because of this is my usp for example and uh, people do like me because of uh, the way i am you know many a times i break the law as well and this is fine because my people love me for this thing so this is one reason why we see this sort of behavior because this mps they know it very well that cctv cameras are on all the proceedings are recorded and this sort of behavior is not good for our country because Parliament is temple of, uh, you know, democracy. Uh, we know it very well. This gesture, remember, when uh, Prime Minister Modi, when he became Prime Minister back in uh, 20, uh, 2014, uh, this was like uh, when before entering, he, he you know, he bowed uh, on the stairs, uh, which we call uh, genuflect. He genuflected. And this was a clear signal from a leader that uh, you know that this is the importance and what this parliament it is genuinely a temple of democracy and we should respect it and we should be in our best behavior because the whole world and whole country is watching us when we are discussing things over here but then as well we find this sort of things going on and this is a very sad thing and it is not about any particular political party we have seen this sort of behavior from from various different political parties. Sometimes they are in opposition, sometimes they are ruling party. So this is not acceptable at all. And this will not change until we change, we as citizens. If we change our preference, only then we will see a change in this sort of behavior. Now, there are a few things uh, that uh, we should do apart from changing our behavior. We need to have a very, very heavyweight, you can say, a very uh, capable parliamentary affairs minister. Parliamentary Affairs Minister's job is to make sure that uh, his party, of course, at the same time, all other parties, uh, they perform very well, they behave very well. You know, a Parliamentary Affairs Minister will have a discussion with uh, with other leaders uh, from various different political parties uh, and uh, he will try to, he or she will try to, you know, uh, get a sort of support from the people. Of course, you are going to face opposition and these other things and this is these things are part of our system and they are important as well opposition dissent all these things are very important but at the same time it should not go out of control the speaker's traditional non-partisan role is also important uh, i'm not saying that uh, current speaker is biased or previous speakers were biased but sometimes you know if if knowingly unknowingly if you do something and if it sends a wrong signal then this will impact our democracy so speaker's role speaker should make sure that uh, he or she is impartial, neutral in not just words but in act as well. Uh, at present, we don't have any deputy speaker, so this uh, office is vacant for a very long period of time. We need to fill it up as soon as possible, and also we need to make our we need to amend some of the rules. If someone misbehaves, uh, right? Uh, uh, if if we if we if we find someone uh, not taking or not. Uh, uh, obeying our our speaker and system, then uh, we should, of course, uh, you know, suspend that person. And if it becomes a bit frequent, when I say frequent, I don't mean to say that every day we need to we need someone to be kicked out of our parliament. But if someone has misbehaved, then definitely there should be a punishment. So it will set proper standards and it will create a fear as well that if you misbehave, you'll be out. And political parties as well, they need to make sure that they control their uh, their uh, political leaders or their members so these are the steps we need to take now moving on to next item it's about missing at birth now yesterday the whole world celebrated international women's day 2020 and uh, celebration is um, important of course uh, it's about awareness creating awareness and uh, this is a topic that requires uh, more awareness uh, and not just awareness but at the same time I would say awareness is important it is it is a first step I would say but 
action is or result is one of the most important thing when it comes to women's day and uh, um, you know this the things that are going on at present to choose on on the basis of gender and eliminate new life if the gender is not favorable can easily be among humanity's worst moments now if you observe other species living organism uh, in human beings as well uh, if you go back in history then you will find this thing that uh, mother nature right uh, mother nature produces more females compared to males this is my observation right and uh, i'm sure you will find scientific evidence for this thing as well but if you observe tigers or mammals or other rodents maybe other animals right uh, you will find this thing that mother nature produces more females uh, than males but it's quite strange that because of this technology and all these things right this uh, social attitude or i would say social very bad social attitude we have changed things uh, this particular topic is in news because uh, of tamil nadu we have one place in tamil nadu called uh, usilam usilampatti and usilampatti is in news because uh, a small baby girl a female infant Uh, was uh, was fitted with toxic milk uh, by her parents and her grandparents and they are arrested of course but this brings uh, on our table a very important topic like why do we find this sort of things uh, still going on in our country and this is something that we don't find just in our country it's going on in the world as well like in developed nations you don't find this sort of crimes but in developed nations you find that uh, women they st- are still struggling they are not properly represented in political arena or uh, you know in business world or any other places now data on sex ratio at birth srb uh, culled from the civil registration system uh, show an alarming fall over the years from 903 girls for every 1000 boys in 2007 it dropped to 888 877 in 2016 and this is a sad thing in today's world we have social media and all this uh, you know various different channels and various different um, sources uh, through which we can spread and create awareness but it looks like awareness uh, campaigns have gone up but action it has not converted into action and this is a clue as well as a as a this is a sort of hint uh, or a thing uh, on which we need to work now activists uh, point out that while infanticide may have come down sex selective abortion at scan centers continues as the preferred vehicle for parents and grandparents obsessed with son preference why do we have this son preference in our society because we have created a very bad system for girls you know uh, like a boy will look after the parents and it is said it's not always right but that's what people believe a girl uh, she has to leave her parents home and she has to stay with uh, stay with uh, her in-laws after marriage and uh, there are so many things i'm i'm sure you know the common reasons right i'm going to talk about a few things uh, that that i think we need to change or you know small things i i i believe in in small changes uh, when it comes to society when it comes to uh, changing our attitude if we do those small gestures and small changes like for example like uh, getting on or alighting from a bus or a train if you allow women uh, to step in and step out right and then boys and men after that this lot can come down or go uh, or, or or be on board same thing applies to other places uh, uh, maybe if if you find someone a mother um, with small kids uh, trying to cross the road then we should of course uh, slow down and let them cross safely you know these are the things that we need to do the small gestures if you if you see someone if you see a lady if she's trying to come out from a place and if you're nearby a door right to just hold the door open for her you know so this small things it's not that they are weak and we are doing these things because they are weak no this is a respect that we need to because every one of us right we uh, we have mothers sisters friends right and we are talking about humanity here 50% human population is 
women and 50% men. So if, let's say, out of this rest of the 50%, if 30% are not getting what they should get, right, uh, the, that respect, that place in society, then humanity is not getting what it should get, isn't it? Simple as that. And we have this Beiti Bachao, Beiti Padao uh, campaign that's going on. It has been very successful in Haryana, but uh, still we need to do more, not just in Haryana, but in other parts of our country. Uh, Chief Minister Jailalita, when she was uh, Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, at that point of time, uh, she created this cradle baby scheme, uh, which worked very well, but uh, still we find this sort of cases going on. So what we should do now, first of all, we need to work on changing this attitude. And it's not about just changing the attitude of men itself. There are so many ladies out there, right? Uh, some mother-in-laws, uh, their attitude needs a proper repairing too. 180 degree turn is required in many of uh, women's uh, thinking as well. Uh, when they torture their daughter-in-laws and, you know, as this case itself of this Tamil Nadu, the, this one, uh, coming from this... Uh, uh, Usilampati, this case uh, where grandparents are involved. So this is something that is very sad. And here the mother of the child is involved as well. So this is uh, not acceptable. So it's not about just changing the mindset of men or patriarchy only. Of course, we need to get rid of patriarchy, but it should be based on equality. right? So we can deploy technology to monitor every single pregnant woman and... Uh, just keep on working on this thing. That's that's what I can say, that we have to, at every stage, wherever we can create awareness about this thing, wherever we can create a resistance of the, of, you know, when it comes to killing or the selective sex abortion, uh, we need to resist this thing and we need to promote equality. So that's everything as far as these two editorials are concerned. Now we have one as Delhi burned institutions looked away. It's going to be very easy to understand one because we have talked about it earlier on as well. So children uh, watch with frightened eyes as uh, distraught mothers lament and mourn before people with cameras and notebooks. We also know that uh, those commoners, right, uh, proud working people, they were forced to depend on someone's charity because uh, this riot and uh, these things, this visuals, uh, this bad experience uh, has created psychological scars in so many children and this is going to stay with them forever now victims uh, turn uh, are turning away officials they don't want any help from officials because uh, they think like government is collecting uh, their data and collecting names and it will punish them later on and government is filling up forms for national population register and there is some false things also going on about national uh, means you know proper information about npr and CAA. There are a few people uh, who believe uh, that uh, NPR and things will take away their citizenship. Uh, CAA will take away its citizen. This is not right. So first of all, right amount or right information. Uh, spreading right information is also necessary. The second thing is uh, this whole incident is a clear failure of political class. And I'm not just talking about the ruling party. Opposition leaders as well. And again, we are not talking about all of them, but few of them were quite negative. Their speeches were not right, were not democratic, were not secular. And this is not acceptable. And uh, opposition leaders as well, some of them have not opposed. And they have not done their duty as well uh, by opposing uh, wrong deeds. A police force, uh, we have the largest, after Jammu and Kashmir, Delhi has the largest police force in any state or union territory. And uh, what we saw, we have discussed earlier on that uh, police people, that police personnel, they were, uh, they were destroying CCTV cameras and they were hitting people badly. Not all of them, but again, few of them. Delhi High Court Justice S. Murlidharan, who ordered for uh, this uh, uh, registration of FIR, he was transferred and we have seen political debates going on in news uh, regarding this topic as well so things are very bad right uh, this sort of things are not acceptable at all when institutions are when institutions when they fail when when police is not doing doing its duty properly to to protect people when government uh, is you know when you have ruling party where few leaders are are in their speech they are they are throwing hate speeches when opposition 
parties uh, are keeping imam this all things are not acceptable <laughs> then dear friends uh, we have other articles like this one is about uh, journalism every monday you find one article on journalism not important for your preparation then you have this two articles again if you go through this one it looks like it's about tribal people yes it is about tribal people but if you go through it's not directly important for your examination so i have dropped this too we are going to talk about this one later on but before that i have two more articles i was going through because this two articles uh, I, i don't find them uh, that interesting or when i say interesting i mean to say not good for your examination so i was scanning other newspapers and i came across this one one editorial called no improvement from times of india so it's talking about this bail out now i'm sure you know the meaning of bail out bail out here in this case uh, when it comes to financial world bail out basically means that you are injecting money uh, in an institution and the the reason why you're injecting is you want to uh, you want to protect that institution you want to help that institution so here this yes bank was in is in trouble in fact and sbi is basically going to take over 49% of its stake by injecting money in this one so this article is about uh, yes bank uh, and uh, this uh, bailout of yes bank now this is going to be the largest of its kind in recent times sbi's uh, injection or bailout it's going to be the largest and for all practical purpose it is an indirect use of public resources as well to bail out a private uh, failed bank um, government is using public resources at the end of the day state bank of india is a government bank and government bank is there because of yours and mine and uh, you know people who have paid taxes so tax money is used to bail out private failed private banks and uh, the question is uh, should government do this thing the answer is yes as well no as well yes because uh, you have a 2 lakh crore out of this 3 lakh crore asset base uh, 2 lakh crore is funded by deposits so this money this depositors money like commoners money uh, government of course uh, should protect it i mean so many people uh, will lose everything isn't it if they lose if this bank goes down so government has uh, rightly intervened no because uh, you know you cannot keep on doing this thing again and again now this whole yes bank issue is not a new issue it's it it should not be taken as a big surprise because from last two years if you are following current affairs then you'd be aware about this thing that former ceo rana kapoor was asked to leave and uh, the bank or rbi injected uh, one nominee as well in on the governing body uh, to keep an eye on this board of yes bank uh, so this problem of yes bank is not new the central bank's anxiety and the need to keep a closer watch the symptoms that yes banks accounts did not reflect a reality and from last uh, maybe 2 years uh, right to things are not right so at present government has uh, imposed a temporary moratorium that you can only withdraw 50000 rupees from your account if you have any in yes bank and uh, the positive thing is that uh, 2450 crores will be infused in this bank and uh, Um, as we are discussing that from last two years we have witnessed this sort of issue so this also indicates that uh, poor supervisory performance of rbi it is the rbi from which you take license to operate a bank and uh, rbi was well aware about this issues that were going on and then as well took after two years we f- we are finding this situation that means that we need to upgrade and improve rbi's regulatory and supervisory skills so this is important and we need to keep an eye on as a as an institution as a apex bank rbi should keep an eye on the top uh, management of 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 banks uh, private banks uh, corporate uh, this cooperative banks and of course government banks uh, psus are of course directly under control of rbi but uh, when it comes to private banks uh, government sh- uh, this rbi should keep an eye so that we don't find this sort of situation and people's money is not used after bailing this sort of because we have other problems at w- as well to look after so we sh- this one is okay this case but uh, we should try that we don't find similar situation in future moving on to next item it's about coronavirus i found this article from a newspaper called mint very interesting newspaper so in this mint newspaper one uh, writer has wrote this article and again it's a to the point very interesting article it's about this coronavirus now we know that uh, 
normally what happens when we wake up uh, if if you have this habit of checking your phone then you find uh, messages from various different your social contacts right they send you good morning messages and sunshine and so many things positive quotes good picture etc but this things have uh, this stuff has changed uh, nowadays we find coronavirus related stuff on our phone and it is because of this coronavirus means people are quite afraid of this coronavirus now coronavirus is again something not new it has been around us for a very long period of time sars mers epidemics were caused by coronavirus if you go through the bottle of detol and lysol you find this uh, these bottles are telling us for years that uh, they kill coronaviruses and in the age of social media misinformation is a big problem and that's what uh, nowadays is going on when it comes to coronavirus different people they have different opinion different information about coronavirus the reality is that if you want to know something about coronavirus you should check out the website of who or government's website and who has now declared an infodemic that is confusing people if you go through the facts then you find that coronavirus or this covid-19 has a mortality mr that is mortality rate of just 3.4% if you compare it with other diseases then it is nothing like sars used to have 10% mr is was having 34% mortality rate but here here you have just 3.4% and uh, it affects mostly elderly people Uh, who have prior lung conditions and not a single child up to the age of 9 has died from covid 19 and mr is very low for people below 60 so there is nothing to be worried about when it comes to when i said nothing i don't mean to say that you don't have to do anything or you should cough and sneeze openly no there are some things like common sense that we have to use right personal hygiene is of course very important and you should have those etiquettes as well that if you are coughing or sneezing then you should carry a handkerchief isn't it we should use handkerchief we should wash our hand before eating after eating of course uh, avoid handshakes uh, right uh, means the best is to go with namaste namaste is best you know it's 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 a wifi thing <laughs> like you stay away from you means we are not physically touching someone so it's okay particularly this normally as well it is good and this sort of time as well it is good now india has had 33 victims of whom three have fully recovered and none of the others are in critical condition but then as well the thing is why people are you know behaving the way they are because of misinformation because fear is the deadliest virus you know fear has rather than this virus the fear has touched its tipping point and at present you find like uh, fear is going on in england and other countries as well people are you know making the sanitizer they are using aloe vera and they are using this vodka they are mixing vodka with aloe vera and other things and they are making this hand sanitizers because hand sanitizer shortage is going on over there a thing that you can buy for 1 pound at present people are paying 15 12 13 pounds for a bottle of sanitizer so can you imagine like there are so many people they are making money out of this this fear and uh, one more thing that mask will not protect you right uh, covid is not transmitted via air unless someone who already has it uh, sneezes and coughs in your face and it spreads via surfaces so if you are wearing a mask it's likely that you are pulling it down often because you aren't comfortable or or to you know you are you are pulling it down to speak or when you don't feel comfortable you are going to pull it down so if you have touched a surface that is uh, that is carrying this corona virus then it's going to touch you or you you are going to touch your nose or your face uh, to pull this uh, uh, this mask or pull up and pull down your mask and chances are that you are going to get corona more if you are wearing a va- mask and people in our country in india we should not we have one of the toughest immune system in the world second thing look around us we have filth and pollution right uh, so we have this natural resilience um in us right uh, if we compare ourselves with people of us and other then we are very strong in terms of immune system we have one of the toughest immune system in the world so there are other problems that we need to worry about right uh, yes as i told you cleanliness personal hygiene these are the things that we need to practice and maintain but uh, apart from that there is it's means the way people are afraid we don't need that much of fear 
no green shoots uh, of a revival in sight as yet this one is about uh, this figures that we GDP figures the third quarter GDP estimate is out it's uh, 4.7 for three months now the previous one July to September was 4.5 then later on it was revised the first two quarters so first quarter was 5 when revised it uh, was 5.6 uh, early on 4.5 for second quarter revision rates are 5.1 percent so why do we find this ups and downs because GDP numbers are not uh, statistical you know means they are not um, when I say I mean to say they are not like uh, thermometer numbers right that uh, you have just one thing to check and then you get an accurate result no uh, GDP is a statistical construct and uh, you collect information you get information about production consumption incomes and after a few months as well you get some more updates so ups and downs are quite natural this is something that constant revision is also required and india is also following this uns unsna that is united nations system of national accounts so this latest figures uh, have pointed that uh, things were are not that bad things are moving a little bit okay i'm not saying it's great but it's not that bad either so this article is basically saying that uh, you know economy is not doing that great yes we know that it's not doing that great uh, we used to clock 7.1 percent uh, and at present we are somewhere at 4.7 around 5 so two percentage drop is big and we have to you know work out and ideally in an ideal world we should have uh, uh, double digit uh, uh, you know growth that's what we need if you want to lift uh, this poverty get rid of poverty and all these things that are going on in our country for that we need money for that we need uh, double digit growth but at present it doesn't look like we are going to get double digit growth things are as i told you not great but they are not that bad uh, reforms uh, structural reforms are required uh, then the short term and medium term um, reforms are also required and uh, if, if we do all these things and if things are implemented properly then yes we can uh, reverse this uh, thing and then you have this news items uh, after 15 hours of questioning Rana Kapoor arrested by ED coupled with IS links held in the capital over 40 percent government schools don't have power or playground and uh, then this red panda is in news uh, red panda is uh, in this red list of IUCN, it is uh, listed as endangered species. You find it in India, and I have a question for you that uh, apart from India, which are the other countries where you find this red panda? Very important question. They can ask you this question easily, like in which jungles you find them in our country. So it is this Himalayan habitat, remember? And uh, you should know the countries as well where you find this, apart from India, which are the other countries where you find this? So this is your question, that apart from country are the other countries where you find this red pond and that's everything in today's discussion thank you very much for watching this video god bless you all jai hind